You are watching With a Cup of Tea, the High Plains Book Awards edition, a production of This House of Books, an independent bookstore cooperative and tea shop in downtown Billings, Montana. Now here's our show. Well, welcome to This House of Books. Uh, we have with us today, Catherine Hunter, who's a finalist for the High Plains Book Fest uh, with her book of poetry. So uh, we're going to talk about that in a little bit, but maybe, uh, Catherine, we could first uh, talk a little bit about you. Tell us about yourself. Well, I live in Winnipeg, Manitoba, and I've lived here almost all my life. Uh, I did go out to do um, graduate work at the University of Victoria in beautiful Victoria, British Columbia, uh, many years ago, and I really enjoyed living out there too. And I'll tell you, the weather out there is much, much, much nicer. Uh, than it is here. However, we have just had a lovely August here and I've enjoyed spending a lot of time outdoors. I teach at the University of Winnipeg here, so it's right in my hometown, so I'm very, very lucky. And uh, we are unfortunately closed now due to the uh, COVID virus that is going around. So um, I've been very busy getting ready to teach online. I teach creative writing there, so it really is extremely enjoyable job. Um, very time consuming and takes up my entire life almost. Um, but uh, I get to see all the young poets and fiction writers and okay, the occasional playwright, although we do have a theater and film department that really uh, more or less looks after their playwriting and the screenwriting people. But sometimes they like to come and take a creative writing course as well too. So it's usually a very lively group of people um, with great imaginations and gift of the gab. So we usually have a, have a really good time um, learning how to craft stories. Because I also write, I mean, I write poetry, but I also write uh, short stories and novels. Well, I'm so, thinking uh, you have, uh, if I have the numbers right, you have four books of poetry and five novels. Is that right that you publish? Yes. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, one of those novels is, I call it a novella, because it's kind of short. But okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Fantastic. So you're, you, you have quite a lot out there. And also, uh, I'll just mention, uh, you're returning to the High Plains Book Fest. You were a, a finalist also in 2016, I believe. Yes, and that was, that was just great, because I got to come down to Billings. And uh, I have a friend who lives in Alberta, who has a cousin in Billings. So we used that as an excuse to get together. And so my friend came down there too, and she came to the banquet uh, with me actually. And uh, what a beautiful uh, town. I was just really stunned by it and uh, loved the bookstore and all the readings and everything. So it's, it's too bad we can't do that this year, but hopefully in the future, it will happen again. Hopefully in the future. Well, we, we hope you'll be back again, you know? <laughs> So and we can we can see you in Billings. Yeah. So tell me about your book. Right. So the book is entitled St. Boniface Elegies. And St. Boniface is, we, we would now call it a neighborhood of Winnipeg, but many years ago it was its own um, town. It's a French town. Um, there's a lot of French Canadians, as I'm sure you're aware. And is it, uh, primarily, is it still primarily francophone there? There's a large francophone population here, but um, everybody speaks English. So, but there is like a college Saint Boniface. So there's a college here that is run entirely in French. And um, I'm kind of in the south Saint Boniface right now, and the northern part of Saint Boniface is where you'll see m uh, many more French people. There's a fantastic French bakery there and um, almost everybody, including the English customers, speak French when they're in there. Well, you say, croissant. I have to tell you, we now have a French bakery in uh, Billings and it's been named in, I think, Food and Wine is one of the top 100 French bakeries or bakeries in the United States. Wow. It's amazing. Well, well, you're, you're lucky. <laughs> Very lucky <Yes>. indeed. <laughs> so yeah, this one is good too. And it's kind of a good, a good thing that it's about a um, half an hour bike ride away from me. So I don't go there too often, but. Uh, Your book. So the, um, 
So St. Boniface is like across the river, across the Red River from the rest of Winnipeg. And, um, but now it totally belongs to Winnipeg and there are plenty of bridges and it's all one, we're really all one big city. But there are some, still some traditions here. They're, they have every year the Festival de Voyageurs where they get together to celebrate the uh, French and Métis uh, roots of, uh, of St. Boniface and of Winnipeg um, by going back to the fur trade. And they have snow sculpture competitions and fiddle contests and all that kind of thing. Anyway, uh, that's where I've been living since about 1980. And um, there is also a St. Boniface Hospital right near where the rivers meet. And St. Boniface Hospital has become a kind of important place in my life. Um, where the rivers meet, Assiniboine and the Red River meet, is called the Forks here. And um, it was a big um, you know, fur trading center uh, years and years ago. And it was also a site uh, of many historical events such as the Louis Riel and the Red River Rebellion and these kinds of things. So um, every year we have a Winni the Winnipeg International Writers Festival. And um, the person who runs it likes to start off the festival on a Sunday night at the Forks and she asks all the readers who are going to read that night to please read something that is related in some way to the Forks or the Rivers Meeting or something like that. So one year I was asked to do that and um, I was working on it and, you know, I went down there and I looked across the river and I'm like, oh yeah, there's a St. Boniface Hospital. And, and I was thinking, you know, oh, my daughter was born there and my mother died there. And um, a really wonderful poet, uh, from Winnipeg, who was a friend of mine, Patrick O'Connell, um, he spent quite a bit of time in the psychiatric uh, unit there from time to time, and I would go and visit him. And um, if he was well enough, we would be able to go out on the grounds and sit out there. And I can remember him reading me poems out there. So I started writing about these kind of things, you know. And then uh, one day, um, I was invited to the uh, wedding of uh, two creative writing students who had met in my class and were getting married. And they held their wedding reception at the boat club, the rowing club, which is right there at the Forks also. So that night uh, I was telling, you know, I was sitting outside, there's a sort of a balcony out there above the river. And uh, a few people came up and were talking to me. And I was saying, I'm trying to write a poem about this place, you know? And as we were talking, the trains went by, there's a rail bridge above there, and one train was going east, and the other train was going west, and then the riverboat came down the river uh, with all this music, you could hear people partying on the riverboat and such, and then another boat went by in the other direction, and uh, suddenly like the whole poem kind of came together for me. And uh, that poem is called uh, Udena, which is the um, Cree name for that place and is also the name of the park that's at the Forks, uh, Udana, and that's where they held the Writers' Festival opening night. So uh, all of those things are in there. I mean, my mother, my daughter, my friend Patrick, the, the wedding, <laughs> so birth, death, marriage, illness, you know, creativity, everything is in there. And uh, that poem is in St. Boniface Elegies. Um, but also later, um, you know, in the spring of 2016, my husband was diagnosed with um, cancer, fourth stage lung cancer. And so uh, he was, you know, he was, what do you call it, terminal. And um, so he spent some time there. And that's where we first, that's where he was first diagnosed. We took him to emergency there. And um, so I started writing uh, poems, or just, uh, they weren't really poems then, I just, you know, the way poets are, we're always scribbling down things and ideas and little drawings in my notebook and stuff like that. And that eventually turned into a whole series of poems about Ron and um, what he went through um, there and what it was like to have our world just, you know, kind of blown apart. So that's another reason why St. Boniface Elegies. It's, so that's where the title comes from. And also I was thinking of, um, uh, Rainer Maria Rilke, uh, who wrote the Duino Elegies. And, um, and I do write a poem kind of in answer to Rilke uh, in the book as well. 
So I think I went on a little too long there, but uh, that's pretty well what I have to say about the book. So it's uh, it's a variety of things. There's the uh, well, think, let's think. They're elegies. So you're thinking not only of the the tragic death of your husband, but also of other things uh, of the past that yes. maybe you miss. And yeah, yeah. But uh, there are a variety of poems in there. But, uh, yes, some of the poems I consider to be uh, humorous. Uh, mm -hmm. in the book and had a lot of fun writing some of them. So it's not all, they're not all sad poems. And I think even some of the sad poems, you know, they, I mean, that's life, right? It's part of, it's part of life. And I, I, um, I've always, since I was a kid, really responded to whatever's happening in my life through words, um, through writing. And uh, sometimes, you know, as a, as a writer or as a poet or as any person I think whether you're a dancer or a singer or just a just a person who just wants to talk to other people sometimes we feel that the things we have to say are are not important or that other people won't understand them or that they're too sad or they're too personal and we shouldn't talk about them and over the years I've learned that that's not really very helpful uh, or productive, and that you know sometimes I will read at a, you know at a reading, and people will come up to me afterwards, and they will be like, "Oh, thank you," you know, because I feel that way too, or you know, my mother died of cancer last year, or what you know, whatever it is, and there's a connection, and I think we really, as human beings, we need to connect with each other, and poetry is just one way um, of doing it. Well, you certainly, uh, you're touching on some really universal themes that I think uh, do indeed touch everybody's life. So, uh, who, who do you think of as the audience for the book, for these poems? Um, pretty wide audience, I think. Um, I was, I've had a kind of ongoing conversation with a certain type of writers who, um, who might be called, you know, experimental writers, and uh, whose work appears to people who are not familiar with that type of writing, their work seems to be like really difficult, and how can you possibly understand it, and that kind of thing. And uh, they say that they like to write that way because they want to make people feel, um, like it's a political thing for them. They want to make people feel uncomfortable, and they want to make people be aware of language, and they want to teach people about this, that, and the other thing. And um, they think that lyric poetry, some of them have said to me, lyric poetry just consoles people and makes them think that everything's all right. And really everything is not all right. And so to that I say, um, well, of course everything is not all right. And uh, we're not stupid enough to believe that it is. And I think that sometimes, you know, the audience that I think of for my poetry are people who have been hurt very badly and um, I always find that, and it's also true of my novel Afterlife, that the people who responded to it the most were people who had suffered really terrible losses in their lives and um, just really enjoyed the, the book and enjoyed reading about somebody else who's had to go through something like that and come out the other end and um, has found a way to talk about it and live with it. And um, so I think of my, Sometimes I think of my audience like that. There are those people out there. And then there are also the people with the weird sense of humor who, uh, who get my jokes or who laugh at my jokes. There's not too many besides my own brother, but <laughs> <laughs> there are a few. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for joining us here today. Okay. I'll just add one more thing to that, which is like, oh, sure. Um, I like to write to, I like, for in terms of audience, I like to be able to write in such a way that's clear and that anybody's going to be able to understand it. You know, sometimes it might get a little dense here and there, but in general, I just like to write in sentences that anybody could understand. So in terms of audience, yeah. yeah. I love that. <laughs> it just makes perfect sense to me. Good. Well, again, thanks so much. Thank you.
This program has been produced by This House of Books in collaboration with the High Plains Book Awards. The Book Awards were established to recognize regional authors and literary work that examines life on the High Plains. Nominations will be accepted starting in January 2021 on the website highplainsbookawards.org.